All right, guys. So when I was in college, right, it is very, very rare that um, when you take a class, uh, professors will just outright debunk uh, a commonly held saying, right, that you hear in the political sphere. It's only happened a couple times, right? Usually they'll present both sides of the argument and then, you know, they'll sway one way or the other, but they really won't say because they don't want to get too political now when i was at unc chapel hill uh for a professor to outright make a claim about something it's only happened twice right the first time was in a public policy course right keep in mind this is public policy this is not economics uh where they just flat out said that supply side economics was bs right that, that's what a public policy class said i'm not saying that that's what they're saying and when i took an actual economics class they said that the gender wage gap was a flat out myth okay because there's a common saying that says that women only earn 82 cents on the dollar compared to men therefore women are being discriminated against in the workplace when it comes to wages all right now they arrive at this by basically taking the average wage of men and women without accounting for some crucial differences like education occupation experience hours all the factors that go into what people earn okay and lo and behold when you account for all these factors the gender wage gap becomes basically non-existent okay this is something that again was just flat out said in one of my higher level economics courses and again i found it pretty rare for professors to outright make a claim like that in regards to uh certain political statements like that okay but this uh gender wage gap myth has been uh parroted by the feminist movement okay and they're using this um, often miscited and misunderstood statistic to basically advance their agenda and to demand more wages and more pay, even though, again, there is no gender wage gap, okay? There's not really much that can be done to change this because basically it comes down to the individual in regards to uh, earning more money, right? Like I said, what occupation you choose, how many hours you put in, your education, uh, whether or not you negotiate your salary, <laughs> all those things basically come down to the individual, right? It's not about gender, it's not about your sex, it's about individual choices. However, Miss Megan Rapano here, who's a famous uh, soccer player, is gonna come out and talk about how she's been disrespected, right? and put down because she's a woman right and that she's getting paid less solely because she's a woman not because of any of the other factors such as whether or not you know her sport or her occupation is bringing in as much money as uh you know men's sports or men's soccer players do no it's not about that it's it's about the fact solely because she is a woman I'm a member of the LGBTQ community with pink hair, and where I come from, I could have only dreamed that I would be standing in the position I am today at the White House. I'm also a professional athlete, and I've helped, along with all of my teammates uh, virtually here today, one teammate literally here today, uh, win four World Cup championships and four Olympic gold medals for the United States. And despite those wins, I've been devalued, I've been disrespected, and dismissed because I am a woman. And I've been told that I don't deserve any more than less because I am a woman. You see, despite all the wins, I'm still paid less than men who do the same job that I do. For each trophy, of which there are many, and for each win, for each tie, and for each time that we play, it's less. And I know there are millions of people who are marginalized by gender in the world and experience the same thing in their jobs. And I know that there are people who experience even more where the layers of discrimination 
continue to stack against them. And I and my teammates are here for them. We on the U.S. Women's National Team today are here because of them. All right, guys, I'm going to tell you. It absolutely disgusts me when women in sports make the argument that they're not paid as much as men solely because they're women. Because they completely discount the fact that they don't bring in as much money as men. That is just a fact. And this is generally true for, you know, women's versus men's sports. Now, when it comes to U.S. soccer, it's a little bit more complicated because the women do earn more um, than men or they have in, in recent years. Namely, between, I think, like 2014, 2016, when the U.S. women's team was basically super popular, yeah, they did earn more money in revenue. However, um, the differences in pay was basically accounted for based off the collective bargaining agreement. And it's basically impossible to really compare the two in terms of wages earned uh, because of the different pay structures and incentive structures. Men basically got more bonuses, but women earn a base salary okay so it's really hard to compare it's like an apples to oranges comparison but the differences is accounted for based off of the agreement that was collectively bargained by the women versus the men same thing i told you guys at the beginning of this video it's up to you to negotiate your salary with your employer okay that, that's up to you but when it comes to women's sports in general when you're not bringing in as much income as men's sports do you cannot be paid more because there's not more money to pay you we, they literally don't have as much money to pay you as they pay a man okay this is simply the free market at work here right it just so happens that women's sports don't bring in more money and it's not because they're women it's because at the end of the day when it comes to athletic competition guys Again, for as much as these people want to deny there's biological difference between men and women, right? At the end of the day, when it comes to athletics, we want to see the strongest, the fastest, and most skilled athletes perform, right? And again, the strongest, fastest, most skilled athletes on the planet just happen to be men. That's just a fact, right? That's just a fact. So more people, including men, and women tend to want to pay more money to watch men's sports, okay? Women's sports, because women are genetically different, biologically different, don't bring as much money, right? People don't watch their sports as much, right? And because of that, they don't get paid as much, right? That, that's just the free market at work. I don't know what to tell you. It's not inherently solely because you're a woman, because there are industries, guys, where women dominate, right? There, there are there are industries that, again, women get paid a ton of money so because they have innate biological advantages over men when it comes to certain occupations, okay? And again, that's not to be an insult or anything like that. That just is what it is, right? Nobody's discriminating against women because you're a woman no in the corporate world right women get paid the same as men if they don't it's not because they're a woman it has to do with either education hours worked right they may get pregnant again that's a biological thing right in which they may not work as much right that, that's just what it comes down to now again the, the mb the wnba they have the same issue right People just don't watch the WNBA. It's just not as exciting. They're not the biggest, strongest, and fastest athletes on the planet. People do watch the NBA, right? Or at least they used to watch the NBA. And because of that, the NBA has to subsidize the WNBA, right? Now, I think Shaq made a suggestion in which he suggested that, hey, maybe we can lower the rim to eight feet so that more women can dunk, so we can see more women dunks, Right? So the sport can be more exciting. So people can, you know, be incentivized to watch it. And the WNBA player he was talking to was like, no, I don't want to do that. So, you know, when people try to make women's sports more exciting, 
so that more people want to watch. Oh, y'all don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. But you want to be paid the same as a man be, uh, is paid, but you're not bringing in as much money. Again, I can understand if somebody in the corporate world, right, is trying to make an argument like this, even though it's not true. But I can't stand when athletes make these arguments because it is clear why there's a difference in pay, right? The difference in pay is solely accounted for the fact that women's sports just don't bring in as much money or the fact that certain women's leagues did not negotiate their collective bargain agreement as well as the men did, right? And it could be because they have less leverage and they could have less leverage because they don't get as many viewers, okay? That's just what it comes down to. You know, it's funny because a successful woman who got paid a lot of money to play a sport seems to understand this. Let's take a listen. Uh, Lauren down here from the Herald Sun again. Um, just another quick one about Angela's question on equality just before. Um, we've got quite a large pay dispute happening with our Australian women's soccer team at the moment. Um, is it frustrating for you as someone who's so prominent in your sport and we heard you say on the Ellen Show the other day you are the richest fighter in UFC, that that sort of thing is still going on? I think that how much you get paid should have something to do with how much money you bring in. I'm the highest paid fighter, not because Dana and Lorenzo wanted to do something nice for the ladies. <laughs> they do it because I bring in the highest numbers. They do it because I make them the most money. And I think that the money that she, they make should be proportionate to the money that they bring in. Guys, it's really that simple. Ronda Rousey said it herself. She got paid to be the highest paid fighter in the UFC, right? Not because she's a woman or because she's a man, but purely because she brought in the most money, okay? That instantly debunks Megan Rapano's argument. Instant debunk. Instant debunk. Ronda Rousey promoted her brand. Women's fighting just happens to be just as exciting as men's fighting. I, I love seeing women fight in the UFC. I think that's probably the most entertaining women's sport out there. It just so happens that the WNBA, right, and, and women's soccer is, is just not the same, right? It's not the same. But in sports where, you know, women bring in more money, they bring in more revenue for what they do. Hey, guess what? She got paid the highest. She got paid the most money because she bought in the most money. Right? This is capitalism 101. This is free markets 101. The free market for certain women's sports have said that, okay, you guys are just not as exciting as men's sports, the men version of the sport. So, therefore, you, you're just not going to get paid as much. Right? I know, it's, you know, you might think it's not fair, but again, life ain't fair. You know, everything is not fair. Right? At the end of the day, that's just how it is. Again, it's not just because you're a woman. It's not because somebody wants to discriminate against women. It purely comes down to the free market. Purely. And guys, this gender wage gap has been debunked by economists over and over and over and over again. And this is getting on the left and the right, guys. The left and the right. But yet, they keep pushing this myth as if it's fact to push an agenda. It's almost like, you know, they want to be subsidized by men. I mean, because again, that's the only way they can get paid. That's the only way you better get paid. The men's sports has to subsidize the women's sports. So they want to be subsidized by men. Otherwise, what you need to be asking is you need to be saying, hey, uh, how can we make our sport more exciting? How can we make it so more people want to watch our sport? That's what you need to be asking yourself. That's what you need to be asking. Because that's the only way you can get paid more. Otherwise, you're asking to be subsidized by men's sports. Which, again, in my opinion, is even more offensive. That's worse, right? That's more degrading. How is that fair? It's not. It's not. Since you're such a strong woman, you should want to stand on your own two feet. So, at the end of the day, you might want to think about making women's soccer more exciting so you get paid the same as a man. So you can get the same sponsorships as men. So you can, you know, sell as much merchandise as men do. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. And again, guys, this is just another example of, you know, people wanting to play victim. Everybody wants to be a victim. Everybody's hurt. You're a star athlete. 
You've made more money off the fact that you're part of the LBGT community and that you're a woman soccer star than a lot of your peers, right? But yet you're still out here complaining. When if, again, your peers had the same type of branding that you've had, you know, if they push, put themselves out there like you, if they created the same type of drama and interest in their sport like you have, right, to get that attention, they make just as much money. They all make more money. That's what it comes down to. But, you know, I just want to chime in on that. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.